Welcome to this channel, it's Max from the Max Creation. By the way, if it's your first time to come across this channel, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hitting the notification bell because you'll always be updated wherever I upload a new video. In today's video, we are going to look at something new. This has been a dazzling question, especially when it comes to the comment section. And I would wish to share it out. What are we talking about? We are talking about what we call contracts. Yes, we've gotten opportunities. It might be opportunities to go to the Gulf countries. It might be opportunities to go in Europe to do some bit of work or you are being recruited to do work. But remember, we have two things that you need to put in mind. That is a job offer and a contract. But first of all, let us try to look at what is an, a contract. What we call unemployment contract. It is a document that is going to signify the relationship between you, the employee, and the employer. What kind of mutual understanding do you put into action or into consideration? The sponsor and you, the worker who is being recruited to do the work. That is what we call, uh, what we call an employment contract. And remember, when you look at some of these Gulf countries, or definitely when we look at Qatar itself, these are divided into what you call three contracts or what you call three contracts or types of contracts that are available in Qatar. One of the type of the contract is what you call the fixed term contract. Another one is what you call the indefinite contract. Another one is what you call the job completion contract. All these are different types of the contract. So when you are signing, when you're given a different, when you're given a contract to sign, especially when you're coming to work in the Gulf or even in Qatar itself, you must know the kind of type of contract you're signing. They may be one for one year, they may be one for six months, they may be one for three months, they may be one for five years, which may be indefinite in one way or the other. So all these ones have what you call clauses in one way or the other, that will either retire you to move to a new employment or retire you or go back to your country before you can get a new visa, which you definitely need to understand. And what kind of mutual understanding is it going to govern you, the employee, and what you call the employer? The employer we are talking about, we are talking about the, sub, the person who is sponsoring your visa. That's the person we are talking about. So you need to be a little bit very careful. When you look at these Gulf countries or when you look at Qatar, each of these Gulf countries have what you call labor laws. There are laws that govern the employees. There are laws that are governing what you call the employer who or who sometimes referred to as what you call the sponsor. These two different parties all have laws that govern them in what you call in the labor law. And normally those are talked about as what we call the articles of labor laws. Articles in the labor law that stipulates the rights of you, the employee, and the rights of the employer. But today's video, we are going to see what are some of the important things that are in a contract. Remember, for example, here in Qatar, your contract can be authenticated by the Minister of Labor. You can check your contract online if it is a genuine contract. In case your employer does not give you a copy, you can still download your copy on online, which is quite very good. That is going to be an authenticated copy of the contract, approved by the Ministry of Labor. Still, something that you need to read to understand as you're signing the contract, I keep on telling you guys, when you are signing that contract, be very careful with the contract. Be very careful. Take every word that is written in that contract to be very useful. Take every single clause of that word to be useful. Read thoroughly and understand. That is why in some cases, the contract should be written in three languages. If you are coming from Uganda, you're coming from Kenya, normally there is a contract that has to be interpreted in your language. Then if you are coming to these Gulf countries, we talk about Arabic because most of them speak Arabic. Then another international language that it has to be in is what we call English. 
Because they assume that everyone can speak English. So make sure that you read thoroughly and understand everything that is being written in your contract before you put your signature or before you put your thumbs up. One, when you get that contract, it will contain the employer's name and the place of work. The person who's recruiting you. The company's name. What is the company's work? Is it a security company? Is it a cleaning company? And what is the name of that employer? It will definitely be in the contract. Then two, the worker's name and qualification, nationality and profession, and what you call the place of residence. You, the person who's been recruited to work, the employee, let's say, for example, from Kenya, from Nepal, Sri Lanka, India, Bangladesh, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda. What is your profession? Are you a security guard? Are you a cleaner? Are you a housekeeping, uh, a housekeeping supervisor? Any of those has to be written out in the contract. Then something that you also need to is the date of conclusion of the contract. That is also very important. When are you going to conclude that contract? What is that date? Is it a two years contract or a one year contract? So that date also has to be specified in the contract. The nature, another one is the nature and the type of work and the place of employment. That also has to be included in that contract. What nature of work are you going to do? Are you going to be a security guard? Are you going to be a cleaner? Are you going to be a delivery boy? Are you going to be a boiler boy? Are you going to be a technician? Or are you going to be a supervisor? It is definitely has to be written out in the contract. Then the, des the date of commencement of work, when are you supposed to start the work, it should also be part of what is being written in the contract. By the way, if it's your first time to come on this channel, consider supporting and subscribing to this channel for the latest updates. Then we look at another one. The duration of the contract is also very important. It will be written out. How many years are you going to complete? Is your contract for two years? Is your contract for five years? Is your contract for three years? Or is your contract for one year? Depending on the agreement that you made when you're coming to this country, it has to be written down in the contract. Because that is a mutual agreement and understanding between the two parties. The employer, the employee, and sometimes the person that is referred to as the sponsor. Then something that you need to, 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 to understand, the contract should also, uh, should also bear the agreed salary and benefits that you are supposed to have as an employee. What is your sponsor supposed to give you? Accommodation, transportation allowance, food, or any other benefits have to be stipulated in that same contract. Still something that you need to know, the probation period should also be written thoroughly well in that contract, which is quite very important. It should also be what is the probation period. Remember, when you talk about the probation period here in Qatar, the uh, other workers, the probation period is six months. And when you look at the domestic workers, if you are coming as a domestic worker, the probation period is nine months. So it has to be written out and stipulated such that you can definitely know what it is. By the way, something that you should know that when you are signing that contract, the date of commencement of the third party or the second party should be the same, which is quite very important, such that you do not have any bleach or even your employer does not have any bleach in any way. Hope I've tried to share with them something for you. Thank you so much. See you again in the next video. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. You'll always be uploaded whenever I upload a new video. Thank you so much. See you again in the next video.